Let's do a couple of examples to learn how to solve multi-step equations with fractions. Remember, to solve an equation like this one, we need to gather all variable terms to one side and all constant terms to the other side. Then we can finish getting the variable by itself. Let's move all the variable terms to the left. So we'll begin by subtracting 1 half x from both sides. This 1 half x is on the right, and we want to move it over to the left, so we subtract it from both sides. Now on the right, the 1 half x minus half x, of course, will just cancel out. On the left, we have to do the subtraction of 3 fifths x minus 1 half x. I'll write this separately in red, 3 fifths x minus 1 half x. This is an example where writing these things as decimals actually makes the process easier. 3 fifths is the same as 0.6. So 3 fifths x is 0.6x, and 1 half x is the same as 0.5x. Then it's immediately clear that this leaves us with 0.5 one or one tenth x. So now we can go on and write our equation. We've got 0.1x after combining those like terms minus one third equals two thirds on the right. Now we want to gather all the constant terms to the right side of the equation. So let's move this one third that's on the left. It's negative one third, so we'll have to add one third to both sides to get rid of it. On the left, the minus one third and plus one third, of course, cancel out, so we're just left with 0.1x on the left. On the right, two thirds plus one third is three thirds, which is one. Finally, we can finish solving for x. We just need to get rid of this coefficient of 0.1. Since dealing with fractions is part of the focus of this lesson, let me write the 0.1 as a fraction, 1 tenth. Then you can see that we could simplify this by just multiplying both sides of the equation by 10. If we multiply both sides of the equation by 10, that's going to cancel out with the 1 tenth on the left because 1 tenth x times 10 is 1 whole x. On the right, 1 times 10 is 10, and thus we have our solution, x equals 10. And we could plug it back in for x in the original equation to verify that the solution is correct. Let's move on to the second problem. 3 fourths equals 1 fourth times 3 minus 5 sixths x. One thing we could do here is distribute the 1 fourth through the parentheses and then proceed very much like we did in the previous problem. But in this case, it's actually easier to just get rid of this fraction from the beginning. We could do that if we multiply the left side and the right side by 4, because this has a denominator of 4. So if we multiply by 4, it's going to cancel out with that denominator. On the left, when we multiply 3 fourths by 4, the denominator cancels out with that multiplication by 4 and just leaves us with 3. On the right, 1 fourth times 4 is just 1, so those cancel out, and we're left with the thing in parentheses. But now that we've got rid of the coefficient by multiplying by 4, the parentheses aren't necessary to include. So we have 3 equals 3 minus 5 sixths x. We want to gather all variables on one side and all constants on the other. We already have a constant on the left side all by itself, so let's move all constants to the left side. The only constant that we have on the right side is 3, so to get rid of that we have to subtract 3, and we have to do that on both sides. On the left, 3 minus 3 is 0. On the right, the 3 and the minus 3 cancel out, and so we're just left with minus 5 over 6x. Now, we could worry about dividing by negative 5 sixths to get rid of this coefficient. However, we don't really have to do that, because this equation says negative 5 sixths times x is 0. At a glance, you should know the only number that could possibly make this true is zero. 
If x was anything else, this equation could not possibly be true. So x is zero. For practice, you might wanna try solving this equation again, but do it slightly differently. Try distributing the 1 fourth through these parentheses and go through the solving again. You should get the same answer. Here are two more equations you can try to solve on your own. They are a bit harder. I'll put the solutions on screen now. And there the equations are with the solutions underneath them. You could have solved them slightly differently, but your answers should be the same. X equals 7 over 38 and x equals negative 300 over 49. For this first equation, you could have multiplied both sides by 3. If you wanted to get rid of this fraction, then you'd have 36x minus 6 equals negative 2 times the parentheses. Or you could have multiplied both sides by negative 3 over 2 to get rid of this fraction entirely. That would actually work out pretty nice as well. I decided to just distribute the fraction through the parentheses. So I got 12x minus 2 equals negative 2 thirds x plus, because negative times a negative, plus 2 sixths. Then I added 2 thirds x to both sides, so you see it move over there. And I added 2 to both sides, so you see a plus 2 over there. Then I decided to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 to get rid of those denominators of 3. So after tripling everything, we have 36x plus 2x equals 1 plus 6. And from there, it's pretty straightforward. Divide both sides by 38 to finish solving. For the second equation, I began by adding one third x to both sides and subtracting 4 from both sides. Then one fourth x and one third x, I gave those common denominators so that they could combine to 7 twelfths x. 3 sevenths minus 4 gave those common denominators so they could subtract to negative 25 sevenths. Then multiplied both sides by 12 to get rid of that denominator of 12 on the left. Negative 25 times 12 is negative 300. And then divide both sides by 7 to finish getting x by itself. That turns the denominator of 7 into 49 because we divided by an additional factor of 7. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my pre-algebra course and pre-algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.